Hey guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sires, back here for the Music Factory Studios. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a clean install of Linux for Pro Audio. Someone asked about this and they were running OpenSUSE. So last night I grabbed the OpenSUSE ISO, installed it on this machine, and our door did not work correctly. And that was their complaint. Um... And they wanted to use our door. They're on OpenSUSE, and it just wouldn't work correctly. So today, I, you know, and I had the same experience. So I couldn't find any workarounds. I, I really couldn't get it to work. It seems that our door is unsupported on OpenSUSE, and the last supported version was our door three. Even though you can install the newest version of our door, it seems that our door three, which is probably a decade old by this time is not so, no longer supported. So today, maybe you could dual boot. Have a small install just for your media, uh, Linux-based distribu distribution. What I'm going to use today is Manjaro because it's the easiest to get around. If you don't like Arch and would rather have something a little more, um, you know, Debian-based, I guess, you could look at Ubuntu Studio. Ubuntu Studio is really great, but I know a lot of people don't like the older packages from Debian and Ubuntu. They like the newer packages, uh, the ability to get the latest and greatest pretty quick without having to go through Flatpak or App Image or whatever, and uh, or, or Snaps. And uh, so this is kind of the happy medium. Manjaro is based on Arch, but it's a slower, slowed down version of Arch. So you're not going to have like package breakage that breaks the whole OS. Breaks the whole OS, excuse me. And uh, so here's how you do that. Alina Etcher is on the left here. And uh, this app works on Linux. It works on Windows. It works on Mac OS. Um, so there isn't really anything you can't really run it on. <laughs> and it's super simple. So what I've done is I've stuck a 60 gig thumb drive into my Thunderbolt dock on my MacBook. And... Uh, I've got Manjaro's newest ISO, Manjaro GNOME. And I'm just going to drag it over to the first part that says Flash from File. And I'm going to drop it there. Click Select Target. And I'm going to find my USB drive, my USB thumb drive. And it's this SanDisk Ultra. Okay. And I'm going to hit Select and then Flash. And it's going to ask me for my administrator password. or my pseudo password on this Mac. And uh, it'll ask you maybe for your Windows administrator um, um, abilities to do the the same thing on uh, Linux. I can't remember the last time I used Etcher. If it asked for my pseudo password on Linux, I'm pretty sure it did. And it just takes a few minutes. And then the next thing is you basically take it out of your PC, your Mac, or your, your Linux machine, and uh, there are other tools out there, like Fedora has the Fedora Rider app. It works on Mac and Windows both and on uh, Linux. So there's a few options out there for you. If you're on Linux, or I mean, if you're on Windows, there is, um, uh, there, there's a couple apps that are Windows-specific that do the same thing. But uh, if you don't need it to basically make a Windows install thumb drive, Belina Edger is perfect. It'll boot Mac OS images. It'll make Linux images, FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, the whole BSD family, and like Haiku and, and some of those other more esoteric kind of um, operating systems. All right, as soon as this is finished, it will ask us to flash another one or eject the disk. Basically, what I do on a Mac is I close Belina Entry and I just pull the stick out. You don't even have to eject it on Mac OS. And uh, you're basically done. Now we're going to move over from the Mac to this HP with an i3 in it, 7100 with 16 gigs of RAM. I put a, I tried to put as much RAM as I could in the machine. It's only got two slots, so I stuck two 8 gig sticks of DDR4 at 2666 in it. And I had a, a 500 gig SATA SSD that I just stuck in it. The machine is just an empty machine. It used to record our security cameras at the studio. <laughs> And it was just, it didn't have anything in it. So I thought, well, this would be perfect to set up just to show how to set up a Linux for Pro Audio machine. Now, basically what I do is close Belina Etcher. 
hit eject you can hit ignore either one it doesn't matter it doesn't remount the disk pull it out and uh, now you're ready to install it be careful if you've got a metal thumb drive it will be hot all right see you in just a second when we boot up the other machine all right so I've started up the other machine and momentarily you should see our screen here I'm gonna hit function F9 or F9 for my at first I hit the escape key because as you can see here at the bottom it says press escape key for startup menu and uh, that gave us this menu I'm gonna hit F9 and I'm gonna boot the UEFI sand disk now if you have an older machine with a BIOS you may and it has both UEFI and legacy depending on the distro you'll have to choose the correct options so I'm going to choose SanDisk, the first one. And I'm going to boot with open source drivers. Now, if you've got an NVIDIA GPU, try the proprietary drivers as an option, okay? That way, you have the correct drivers from boot, and you won't have as much of an issue trying to get it to work. Don't be afraid of this stuff. This is just normal. Um, Microsoft and Apple hide this from everybody, but... Uh, no big deal. I don't know why that Manjaro goes into night mode automatically. I'm going to turn that off. Okay. And uh, it, it's just strange to me that, that that's a thing. It just, it shouldn't be. But uh, sorry about the pops. I had, it on, I had my channel strip on gate and not expander. I just noticed that. So if you heard any pops during breaths, I apologize. Now, first thing we want to do is go up to the right corner, turn off night shift, and then we're going to connect our Wi-Fi real quick. That way we can install it correctly. Okay. And the other thing I like to do really quickly, just because sometimes an install can take a moment, I want to go to the power, and I want to turn this off to never and automatically suspend to off and then I'm going to hit launch installer after I've connected to the internet I hit the welcome to Manjaro next pick your time zone I'm on the east coast so we've got default English that works for me I'm going to go swap with hibernate just because I can You've got a choice between ext4, butterfs, uh, f2fs, whatever that is, and xfs. So, I mean, you could use any of these. As far as I understand it, butterfs is a little bit better than ext4. And if you've got that option, it's a good option. I've used it on, on distributions such as Garuda and uh, a couple others. I can't think of the names right off the top of my head right now. But it works really, 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 really well. And uh, basically, I'm going to use it with this install because I'm using the whole drive. Now, if you're not going to, you can, you'll can you have an extra option. If you're dual booting, you'll have an extra option here that says, you know, use so much of the disk or whatever. And you can split it up and have the grub screen pop up where you choose the OS you want. You can do that with Windows. You can do that with and two Linux distributions. It's however you want to do it. But... Uh, Actually, I'm going to leave it on ext4 because if you choose something else besides Manjaro, you won't have the ButterFS options probably. Or, you know, there are a few out there that still you, that will use ButterFS. But let's use ext4 because it's the longest, most stable disk storage medium um, install. So here we go. We'll hit next. I'm going to type in my name. My name is Joe. And I'm just going to go down here to my password, put in my password. I'm going to click use the same password for administrator account. Click next and install. And it'll ask me to install it now. Yes, I want to install it now. And the install usually, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't take very long at all. At all? At all. What? Did I just have a southern accent? It don't take long at all, boys. It doesn't take long at all. <laughs> we'll hit done and it'll restart. I'll pull out my USB stick. And as simple as that, we're rebooting. You see the HP logo. That's pretty awesome. 
it worked rarely does an install fail on reboot any longer but for a while that was really a thing now here's what I want to tell you if you're using GNOME for multimedia go down here when you go to uh, log in and go to GNOME on Xorg if you intend to do anything with OBS or with um, anything involving screen recording of any sort right now and you want audio with it and the desktop audio you're probably your best option is going to be to use xorg now you might run into some issues with certain um, um extent gnome extensions not really working but it's good that you have this option all right and we're back and i apologize for the audio from the last portion of the video i did not mean for it to record my voice basically twice on a track that i can't split up I'll try to fix that later, but if you do hear basically what sounds like a little bit of an echo or a doubling effect on the the my last portion of the video where we first installed Manjaro, I apologize. I wasn't able to fix it. All right. Now, once we've installed our updates, okay, I have basically set up Manjaro the way I want it right now. And I'm looking through my extensions to see if there's anything that I want to install. One thing I do like to do is with dash to dock is I like the Ubuntu style menu bar. So I kind of like it over here. I like it around this size. Okay. I like it to go to the screen edges. Because I'm using a touch screen, it's just easier for me to touch it in the bottom left hand corner this way. And it gives me more screen real estate top to bottom than left to right. So I like it better that way. I usually make it about between 24 or 26, something around there. And it's it's perfectly fine. I'm going to add the add remove software to my dock as well as the extensions. Um, and uh, another application we need is Manjaro settings. the Manjaro settings app this one this is where you get your kernel at so we're gonna go to kernel double click this one's running but we need this one installed as well this real-time kernel here so I'm gonna hit install okay yes one uh, da, da, da. that is my give it my password and it takes it just a few minutes and it'll get everything going we need to look for the applications we're going to need as well now if you intend to do screen recording things of that nature you may um, decide that you want something for that and your options on xorg are simple screen recorder or obs i'm not sure about Wayland we could look and see together screen recording options for Wayland Linux boy I misspelled half of everything didn't I now GNOME has a built in screen recorder but I'm not sure how it handles audio. We could figure out how to fix that though. Okay, let's add a tab and I gotta remember, I have to look it up. Gnome screen recorder. Uh, built in, that's just bad English, but okay. There is a way to make it run longer. I just have to remember. There's a simple way to do it. Let's see. 2021. I know it says Ubuntu, but usually it all applies. It's Control Alt Shift R. That is correct. Okay, here it is. Okay, it only records for 30 seconds, though. Okay, 
Now, if you're just going to record the screen and want to do a voiceover, basically, as long as your input, your audio input and output is correct, it should work. So, basically, what you want to do is open a terminal. Okay, here's the known terminal. It is possible to increase the duration of screencast manually by modifying the following G setting string using the terminal application. Replace the 60 value with the link you want. 300 for 5 minutes, 600 for 10 minutes, and so on. If you set the value at 0, there will be no time limit. So basically, we'll just copy, paste, and then hit 0, space 0. Boom, we're done. So it is Control, Alt, Shift, R. And now you can look up here, and we're recording. There's a little red dot appears up here in the corner. Now we'd have to hit Control Alt Shift R again to stop the recording. Control Alt Shift R and it stops. And if you look in your I think it's videos, yeah, here it is. Basically we just here's our screen recording from a moment ago. So that's an option on Wayland. I'm not sure how it handles audio, but we could find out really easily. So what I'll do before I end this I will grab a microphone and plug it into the audio interface I have hooked up to this PC and we'll try it okay and we'll see how it works well here's what I'll do basically I'll be right back but you'll see me do the screen recording from GNOME here on Manjaro all right so I did a check to see if I would have audio I'm going to double check something and make sure I have audio. So we're going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to click on literally the first thing I see here and see if I get any sound. Good grammar. Okay, I got sound from my speakers. I was just making sure that there wasn't a problem with that. But I did a screen recording with my microphone plugged in. The OS was seeing the audio, as you can see here in just a second, once it starts playing here. And uh, it was seeing it, but it wasn't um, capturing the audio. As you can see right there on the input device, there was audio going through the OS, no problem, but there was no audio being recorded. So that's not really an option, apparently. But it's cool if you just need to record the screen for something and are going to do a voiceover later. And uh, so that is an option. All right. Moving on. We are using what? Wayland or Xorg? Which are you using? X11. So we have the option to use Simple Screen Recorder. Okay, we can add that. We also need QJack Control. QJack Control. Boom. Now, there's a very cool application that actually works now called Studio Controls. But you have to have a real time kernel installed to use it. It's this app right here a Jack Audio Setup Utility. If you have a USB audio interface, which the XR18 that I'm using with this machine is. Basically, you're going to need to build this from the AUR. Okay, first I'm going to install the first two that we, we did and a GTK theme because I just hate these themes. I'm going to get one while I'm already doing this. Um, I just need something pretty simple. Let's look for something that's kind of um, see what we get here. Well, that's A U R A U R. Oh man, repositories. Let's see what else we got. What can I deal with here? Breeze, deepen. No, Evo Pop. No, it doesn't have a dark version. No, no. I don't like the Materia theme. Paper, no. Really? That's my only options? No. This will do. This one, this one. 
Um, let's see what else we got here. Oh, there we go. Arc theme. The arc theme is usually pretty good. We'll go through these. Okay. Now, we've got our... We went through the few things that we need. We have a screen recorder for quick screen recording using Control-Alt-Shift-R. We're downloading a screen recorder so we can do voiceovers in real time. And we're also, we have installed our real time kernel, which is really a very important part of, uh, important piece of the puzzle for this. Okay. Now, next we need our door. Okay. Our door. And our door is, is a very powerful tool to have. Now, depending on what video card you have, if you're using an AMD card, I've learned this the hard way. AMD cards apparently are awesome for gaming. I don't play games on my computer. I'm just, I'm too old for that. I'm not saying that if you're older than me and you play games, I just, for me, it doesn't, I, it's not my thing, man, okay? I'm not saying that people that are in their mid-30s or mid-40s shouldn't play video games. Don't take it that way. What I'm saying is, for me, I quit playing video games when I was like 15, and I've just never been interested. Apparently, the AMD cards are awesome for gaming. They're trash when it comes to anything for video encoding or anything in the, that area. So if you want to do video encoding, I suggest either just leave it a, an Intel processor in there. Ryzen will not help you, really, unless you're going to do CPU encoding. But if you're going to record the screen while also you know, doing something like pro audio, I really would suggest maybe if you're not against the whole uh, proprietary driver thing, grab an NVIDIA GPU like a 1050 or something. You don't have to have a super powerful one to do this, but uh, like a 1050, 1050 Ti or a 2060 or 1660 Ti, maybe a 1650. If you've got a low profile um, a, a computer, and you don't have like the extra power plugs for a bigger one, look at the uh, 1050 or the uh, 1650. Those work really well. But I kept watching all these videos about AMD graphics cards and how awesome they are for Linux. So I'm like, okay, I like AMD cards. I use them in my Macs all the time. I have a 5700 in a Thunderbolt enclosure. I have a 5500 uh, or a 555X in my MacBook Pro. And you know, I have a, uh, I think it's a 460 in an older MacBook that I have. And, you know, they all run really, really well. They do awesome on Mac OS. And I'm thinking, well, Mac OS uses basically the open source stack. And they, you know, modify the drivers a little bit. I bet that it's pretty good for Linux. I was completely and utterly wrong. It was, it doesn't do anything. It actually makes it worse if you try to do hardware encoding and OBS on the, uh, using VAAPI on uh, Linux with OBS the only I, it just it doesn't work well you'll record one minute in OBS and you'll hit stop and it will take it literally 25 minutes to encode it you're better off to just use CPU encoding okay so we're gonna grab OBS now now I'm gonna dra grab this libva Intel driver for hardware encoding because I have an Intel chip on here, okay? Something I want to do here real quick is sudo pacman dash s neofetch so you can see what this computer is, okay? And basically I'm just running an Intel i3. I didn't, I bought a 550 to put in this machine because I, I was running security cameras on it and I thought awesome this 550 will take some of the load off the CPU and add some longevity to this machine I ran it one day one day right of like six hours and I stopped I used OBS I set up this whole little OBS setup so I could record a couple cameras outside I pushed stop 
and it had recorded like six hours or something and it just said stopping recording <laughs> so i left and went home right this is like oh i don't know eight o'clock at night the next day i come back to work at 10 a.m it still says stopping recording i just let it go to see how long it would take the next time i looked was one o'clock and it still said stopping recording i went to take a bathroom break at 2 30 and came back and looked at it and it had finally encoded it all okay so i was so disappointed i bought a, just a 550 and you think well that's not even worth having I, well it works really well on windows <laughs> to be honest with you i can record you know i can encode 4k 30 on windows no problem 4k 60 will oh you know peg that little graphics card out because it's a low profile one uh 550 it's got four gigs of, of vram on it i mean it's just perfect for what i would need it for so i pulled that card and i put, i bought a 1050 ti that takes no power plugs it was low profile and put it in there the next time i i was recording the cameras and i had put up i think four by this time i had all four cameras i recorded just constantly six hours on hardware encoding you know using the nvidia drivers as soon as i hit stop it was done i was like well isn't that nice so the 550 basically went into a windows pc because it could be used there it does me no real benefit on linux other than display drivers if you need you know like more displays or something than what your pc offers that might be an option but it's not really a great option for me okay so we basically have obs now i'm gonna open obs it should be yeah, there it is oh, is it not done yet oh well, i'm an idiot oh, so i'm gonna pick the uh <laughs> intel driver hardware encoding and uh oh yeah let's get this for camera support just in case we need it and uh it works you know so the intel just for recording purposes using the intel uh driver is perfectly fine it basically you're using quick sync so if you're recording a screen especially at 1080p you're not going to have any problems but if you're stuck with like a Ryzen CPU, like the 2200G, 2400G, 3400G, or some of those that have the built-in Vega graphics, or you have a, um, you know, one of the Ryzen chips with no uh, AMD uh, graphics on them, and you have an AMD GPU, just use CPU encoding for OBS. So let's launch OBS real quick. And I usually go through this to optimize for recording because I don't stream. And I end up having to change this anyway later. Because it wants to record at like 640 by 360 or something. See, see what I'm saying here? This is what it tells you when it's done. You'll need to go in and change these things. So basically it's saying it's going to record the screen at 640 by 360. And then output it to 1920 by 1080. I'm just going to hit apply, but I'm going to fix all that now. First thing I'm going to do is right here where it says desktop audio, mic aux. I'm going to put them in a vertical layout like faders because I'm an audio guy and it going left to right is weird. Settings. We're going to go into output. I'm going to go into advanced to record. I'm going to go into FFmpeg VA API. And basically all of this stuff is good i'm going to go to profile high that way i get good quality it's going to be h.264 and we're going to choose where it's going to go now if you've got an external drive go to other locations choose it here and then record to there okay i'm going to choose to go to the videos folder i've only got one disc installed in this machine right now okay for streaming if you're going to stream you can do the same thing ffmpeg va api now, if you know your way around FFmpeg, you can go to Custom Output FFmpeg for recording and, you know, work around that. And that's an option. Audio is going to be default, but we can choose our audio interface. But for now, I'm going to leave it on default. 
because we're going to come back to that. For video, I'm going to switch this. The output base resolution is going to go to 1920 by 1080. I'm going to bump this up here just because I can. Apply. We can go to advanced settings. You could change this kind of thing if you want to from partial to full. And But if you're going to stream, I would leave this alone from the experts such as ePostVox and those guys. Apparently MV12 Rec 709 at partial is where you should leave it if you're going to stream. Also, if you're recording, make sure you're doing MKV because it's easier to recover it if it was to crash or something. If you use any of the other formats, you're probably going to have to do it over. Okay. So we're going to hit we're going to hit okay. And we're going to go to screen capture. That's good for me. And now we have OBS recording the screen. Or, well, ready to record the screen. I don't have a mic plugged into it, but the other thing you want, might want to do is this. Advanced audio properties. Your mic and aux input, if, it's got, if you've got like a two-channel audio interface or a multiple-channel audio interface, your mic or aux, if you're going to use just the regular pulse audio audio scheme of Linux, you're going to go and click that to mono. That way you get audio on both the left and the right. And when you render your file out or when it's done, you won't have audio just on the left. Okay? If you've got a multi-channel audio interface, make sure you do that. Okay? And we can start recording just to test and make sure that everything is working. Let's install HTOP. real quick oh sorry didn't mean to hit the microphone there we go so not too bad not too bad for what we're doing let me go back and look at something here we had, oh I'm only recording it at 2500 kilobits a second okay let's hit stop and see how quickly it, it stopped the recording. Let's look at the quality of that recording. Yeah, that's terrible quality. So we need to, I would bump that up. That's just me, okay? So I'm going to empty my trash here really quickly. And I'm going back into my settings. The output. I'm going to go to, say, it's 1080p, right? So we'll just say 10,000 kilobits a second. Um, you know, you can do variable bit rate if you want to do that. You can do the quality thing. And about 15 is pretty good. Let's check that. We've got HTOP over here running. That way we've got some text on the screen. If, if it's going to be blurry, we'll really know it by looking at it. All right, let's stop and do a check. All these little things I'm going through are things you should be doing every time. See, that's terrible. That's even worse than what we started with. So let's do this. Let's go back into our settings. Output. Instead of quality, let's go to constant bit rate, 10,000 kilobits per second. Start recording. And there's HTOP. We'll move a window around, make sure it doesn't look crazy or broken or anything. Close dash to dock there. And we will stop our recording do a check again okay still looks like dog crap okay let's go in here and keep working with it until we get it okay output oh needs to go back to high there we go apply okay close this for a second move this to the trash that way we don't get confused over what we recorded Move the window around a little bit. That way there's some motion there. Stop recording. Now, we're going to check our recording. It's not looking any better, is it? That's not good. Okay, settings. Output. Oh, I'm on the wrong spot. Well, I have... Well, 
somebody's already screaming at the screen well you're an idiot you don't know what you're talking about apparently i don't so i agree <laughs> apply okay start recording now let's get some motion on the screen okay and we'll look at the text of h top hit stop and now let's check it that looks pretty fair looks very usable to me wouldn't you say looks good all right now obs is set up to work correctly all right make sure you're in the uh, record tab when you go to the output here okay <laughs> i would rather this be 20 that's just me well let's do this now since we're already here let's check the uh quality at about 15 start recording this may actually be better maybe a bigger file but if you've got the disk space i would use it record at the highest bit rate you possibly can and if you have to make it smaller for upload on youtube or whatever use handbrake that's really the trick to to getting decent looking video you don't want to record it low and then have to run it through handbrake again because it'll just get worse with each degradation or each downward generation so record as high as you possibly can and then then downgrade it all right let's hit stop see what we got here video that looks pretty good now i know it's a screen recording on my mac recording a screen recording from linux so it may look worse on the on the video you're actually watching but uh what i can tell it looks pretty good it looks really good on oh, over here so you could use whatever you like 15 is pretty good anything lower than that you start getting big crazy files like big 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 crazy file size files all right so now we've set up obs for screen recording okay now we need one other thing that we were talking about we need this studio controls from the AUR okay nope wrong one go away AUR studio controls there we go it's the first one we're gonna hit apply going to install all of those things you saw there and build it from source whatever arch does in the background i'm not a developer so if that's not what it actually does it it builds it in some sort of way okay now i'm going to let that build we've had our kernel finish we'll close that we have our real-time kernel installed which we have to have to use studio controls we will have to do a reboot so once it's finished which it's finished now okay i'm going to close this and i'm going to do a quick reboot this reboot will actually be done twice you say well why are you doing it twice well before I open studio controls period do not open it until you've done a restart even if you've installed it do a restart you need that real-time kernel installed or it will not work and it may break your audio so follow that very very closely okay We're back into the environment here okay add tweaks to my favorites because I am a theme junkie okay there we go is that the only yeah pretty much isn't it it's the only uh, <laughs> those are the only uh, icons we have it's papyrus icons okay now 
the next thing we want to do is open up the studio controls app nope wrong one Joe now here is the cool part about this real time fix real time permissions the first thing you need to do is click this button fix the real time permissions seems you have made settings previously and not done a fresh login okay this is why you need to do a restart and then another restart so please remove any custom settings you may have okay so don't do any changes here we'll close both these and do another power cycle or restart now here's the cool part about studio controls you don't need to configure jack with it okay once you configure studio controls it will do everything for you and here's the best part if you've ever tried to use jack and pulse audio together and that, that that makes you want to you know shoot yourself in the foot because it's just it's it doesn't work so if you're in our door you can't listen to you know say a podcast on youtube or audio from firefox or from any other application it becomes basically what happens is jack overtakes everything and takes over exclusive control of the audio in uh in your distro but with studio controls it basically bridges that gap so the two things you want to do is open studio controls and I hit the super key and we need the settings app the regular settings app I switched desktops and shouldn't have okay now there's got to be a way to do startup applications where is that at oh that's in tweaks that's right too many things need to be maybe not where is it at startup applications here we are now type in studio controls we're going to add that to our startup okay now the reason you want to do that is that way it, it want, you know make sure your audio interface is plugged in or turned on before you power up your PC or your Linux machine and we've got studio controls here to automatically start with GNOME now I want it to be on performance okay the i3 doesn't have Intel boost you may want to turn that off they suggest you turn it off actually okay now jack master settings there's tabs here if you noticed system tweaks jack master tweaks we are going to find our USB audio interface right here USB device that should be the master right here make sure you're on the right sample rate the M32 or the uh, X air that I'm using is set at 48 kilohertz sampling rate and uh, main output ports everything's going to be kind of the same extra devices no need to change any of that it's going to bridge pulse audio okay and that should be it we're going to start or restart jack going to stop configuring pulse configuring 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 starting now let's open up our terminal and we're still using as our main kernel 5.13 but it's drawing from the real-time kernel to do this if you do not install the real-time kernel it just won't work you'll have no audio period so now we should have audio here I have system audio okay if we look at QJack control look at the graph it already has everything configured for us the way it needs to be okay pulse is going in this into the system out to the system everything is exactly as it should be 
so you can go in here and configure capture to playback or whatever you need for our door perfectly fine studio controls has already set it up but pulse audio still works as you can see jack is running here no big deal once you've set up studio controls you can close it now we're running on jack as our audio server right now and the one thing about using jack is if you go to like firefox and open youtube um, you get no audio but guess what mom dad i'm gay well well thanks for telling us pal proud of you uh <laughs> okay um but uh it works as you could hear we got audio from firefox and it works perfectly fine now the big kicker to all of this is let's set up our door really quickly i've got another video on that but i'm going to do it now so you know how to do it we're going to click on our door Geo, GUI scaling and font scaling is 100%. That's perfectly fine with me. If you need it bigger, you can make it bigger. If you've got a, a 4K screen, you may want to do like 150 or 200. That will basically take 4K and make it 1080p. Like if you're using a big TV and it's a pretty good distance away, you may want to upscale <laughs> the GUI and font. I'm fine at 100% at 1080p. Now, where would you like new R door sessions to be stored by default? I want them to be in my music folder. Personally, I, I suggest that you take an external drive. If you have two drives in your PC, record to the secondary drive. Okay, not the boot drive that the OS is on. I'm not setting this up right now that way, but you should use either an external drive with the fastest port you possibly can, if that's USB-C or Thunderbolt or, you know, whatever you may have and have our door record those sessions there that way it takes the pressure off of the internal drive you will actually be able to do more that way you'll be able to have handle more plugins and record more tracks play back more tracks and do larger mixing sessions if you do that but for the simple fact of setting this up for a simplistic voiceover style setup or simple you know four to eight tracks at a time recording this is perfectly fine okay so i'm going to record to my music folder because that just makes sense to me that videos screen recording should be in the videos folder and music should or you know our door sessions should be in the music folder next ask our door to playback material as it's being recorded yes unless you have an external mixer or hardware mixer in your audio interface already i could in theory use the um, XR's mixer to listen to what I'm recording but I'm going to let our door take care of all of that while we're doing that we're going to look for the XR app for Linux I do not want the flat hub version because it just doesn't work right <laughs> nope I need to go back Here we go. Product. Okay. Now we'll keep going here with our door. I'm going to go to software and 1.7, right? Didn't work for me well on any of them. I had to go back to 1.6. It wouldn't even open for me. So I'm going to download it just to see if it works now. They may have fixed it. I don't know. Let's see if it opens. Properties. Permissions. Allow executing file as a program. Run. Won't run. So, that's the thing. What you're going to have to do here. Cancel. I need the I need an older version which which can be grabbed from here downloads let's see mixers 
digital rack mixers all let's see here digital stage box mixers x18 um linux okay we did 1.7 and it just didn't work so we'll do 1.5 okay make sure you get the 64 bit if you're on a 64 bit let me save the file here because i need to do this go into my downloads folder 1.5 delete these three files going to extract here boom shakalaka open in a new window properties change this and go to home app images there's my icon open permissions done boom now I've got my control of my audio interface okay I can set that up however I see fit or need to and uh, I can hit connect mixer to PC we can watch the mixer set itself up and I can resize it to my window height now I could use this or our door to listen back to files I'm gonna list use our door because it just works easier now you can use the master bus directly or have a separate monitor bus I'm fine with using the master bus directly okay our door is ready to use apply now you can have a new session there are some templates a recording session adds many mono tracks in the new session advanced session is with a master bus I just use an empty session it's the easiest way to do this right and you can also choose to record into a different drive from right here in the new session spot on our door okay now I'm gonna call this the test session okay I'm gonna open now stop right here don't just hit start okay we're going to use jack 1024 you can choose how what your buffer size needs to be jack is already running our door will connect to it and use the existing settings that's so much easier okay now you can use also but the problem with that is is you'll you will run into latency issues big time okay so since we've set up studio controls just go to jack I usually suggest trying 256 as a starting point because it says look I only have 5.8 milliseconds of total latency that's not really noticeable 1024 10, or 128 is uh, 2.9 512 is 11 milliseconds from that point on some people can hear it some people can't most can't hear it pa uh, below 18 milliseconds they just can't hear it uh, but some people can so the low the lower you can get it the better but don't really I wouldn't suggest like 64 samples the difference between 64 samples and 128 is so minute that I've never met anybody that can tell the difference yet but I have seen people that can tell the difference between usually like 128 and 256 they're pretty rare but they are out there I'm going to use 256 I'm going to connect to jack and boom it's that easy now you don't really have to worry about okay do I have jack configured and, and is it ready and blah 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 right because studio controls has all of that taken care of it taken care of for us okay just make sure you have your USB device right here okay chosen correctly and that's it you don't need to download Carla or you do need QJack control in case you need to hook something else up now we will look at QJack control and see what our door did Let's look at the graph now look at this here's how our door automatically hooked itself into jack you can see all of this patch bay lines running from our door into our system it automatically takes care of everything all the inputs are there it going it's going out to the correct outputs and it's all taken care of for us by using studio controls and the only two distributions I've ever had success with 
with installing studio controls has been Manjaro because they offer the option for a real-time kernel and Ubuntu Studio who actually builds studio controls. That is a Ubuntu Studio application. But it's in the AUR. You take the risk of it being an AUR application. I installed it a couple times and it wouldn't work. And then I thought about it one day and I'm like, I bet you have to have a real-time kernel. So I went and just searched on Google like, Ubuntu Studio Controls requires real-time kernel. And hit enter and it's like, yeah, dummy, we need a real-time kernel. <laughs> so that's part of it. And now everything should just work. You have the easiest setup of audio ever, okay? Your audio interface or your USB microphone will be set up with studio controls. You have to make sure you follow each step, like setting up the real-time kernel. Also, having studio controls start up when you start your machine. That way, everything is working, okay? If you're using a, a, a USB audio interface or USB mic, plug it in before you power on your machine, okay? Or you will run into issues where studio controls can't find it, so it will try something else. Just have it plugged in, and you'll be golden, okay? And here's the cool part. If I open Firefox again, go back to YouTube, and I just click on something, I have sound. But wait, I'm using Jack and our door, and when I do that on other distributions, it takes exclusive control of everything. Yeah, it's not an issue. Now, something else. I'm just going to quit because <laughs> I don't need it. Did we install Simple Screen Recorder? Yes, we did. Okay. Now, to record from Jack to Simple Screen Recorder, it's really simple. We go to, you'll see this page first. The next page you'll see will be this one. Okay. So we're going to go Jack, record system microphone, continue. Let's look at what's going on with QJack control. That's why I keep QJack control on the system, is that way it installs Jack. QJack control and Jack are two different things. This is just a front end control GUI for Jack. Okay, now I'm going to hit the, the uh, graph here. We'll go look at Simple Screen Recorder. I'm going to set it up to do MKV H.264. I'm going to make this AAC. My bitrate should be 256 or 320. Okay, 320 is the best, 256 is fine. I'm going to go and bring this down to about 15. Super fast is fine with me. It's going to record into my videos folder. We're going to continue. Now look at here. Did you see that? Simple Screen Recorder now gets to capture audio from channel 1 and 2. Now here's the problem with that. If I'm using just a microphone, okay, I'm, I want that microphone to be mono, but I need it to be on the left and the right side. So what I would do is I would plug into channel 1 on my audio interface. I disconnect this capture 2. I go capture one from the system I'd bring out two lines from capture one to input left and input right on simple screen recorder okay now if you want audio from the system itself you can bring system audio from here from pulses output so if you need audio from your browser to anywhere else you can come out of Pulse's output here and here. And you're perfectly fine there. That will give you Pulse audio outputs. Okay. Now, I'm going to disconnect those really quickly. All this is, is you're connecting. You're like the old telephone lady <laughs> in the old movies where the guy would go, Hey, darling, could you connect me to New York and... Bob Howard in New York. <laughs> and she's like, sure, honey. I'll get you hooked right up. Do you know that number? Yeah, it's uh, 24. <laughs> you know, you're the telephone person, basically. And it, uh, it you're just connecting inputs to outputs. This is screen recorders, uh, simple screen recorders input. 
this is your system basically your audio interface and you get uh, system playback over here now you can come out of here you know you can bring anything into any input so if you want the uh, the audio input of your system to go into simple screen recorder you can do that and you can leave this attached as well leave capture 2 attached to the right but you need 2 from capture 1 to come in here to left and right that way you're getting a mono signal basically capture 1 you can rename these so we can call this mic 1 right you just right click on them and then rename them <laughs> uh, this can be you know you can do uh, numerous things just try some things not everything is a one size fits all in audio we can also preview just to make sure everything's working as it should and everything is working perfectly fine I will get audio I've done this a bunch of times and then we just start recording with simple screen recorder and it's that simple now you get audio from pulse audio as well as jack so if you want to record an door session or you know use jack and a pulse audio application so say you got our door open and then you realize oh no i need this audio from you know uh, firefox on youtube in my video you can just open firefox and push play and the audio will go directly into simple screen recorder if you set up you know pulse out into simple screen recorder left and right front left input left front right input right you see what i mean so you could rename these like os output or os audio or distro audio left distro audio right whatever you want to call it uh, pulse is your basic audio capture device and if you're familiar with like ASIO on Windows basically the jack system is your ASIO for Linux but the cool part about studio controls is it basically configures most all of this for you and uh, it, you know it takes care of everything I can stop this now and it you know it allows you to have screen recordings with audio as you can see here I did, I'm still recording my audio through the Mac because I'm using a capture card but it'll set everything up perfectly fine and you won't have any real issues as far as like why can't I get audio from regular applications while I'm using our door well you can it's going to take a little time to learn your way around the QJack control uh, uh, setup if you're going to use something like Simple Screen Recorder. But you can do that with OBS too. OBS has an option for Jack. Let's look at that. So if we're going to use OBS, we'll go into our settings. And uh, we're going to go into audio. And we can use this Jack Sync Pulse. Apply and we can reopen QJack I should have just left it open we can open the graph here and uh, we can see that we have those options here you know you can go into audio you can have um, any option you need to have audio you could also add a where's it at the audio uh, input or output capture device audio input okay and it could be your jack source and you can run your you know try some things over here in your graph you can add your mic to playback of system or the uh, pulse left and right wherever you need it to go okay and the desktop audio could come from wherever you need it to come from you shouldn't need jack though to record your voice over now that you have studio controls okay basically all you should need is to go into your audio you can set the bit rate higher i would i do 256 at the very least but if you can't and for some reason your computer isn't uh, powerful enough to really do that I would say 192 it would be the lowest I would absolutely
do even for a voiceover because it doesn't get that weird wishy-washy uh, audio compression sound so the codec the mp3 and aac codecs are pretty good but they still get this wishy-washy sound at lower bit rates okay now you can go back to default and you should be perfectly fine with everything that goes on here and you should be able to record any pulse audio application as it stands right now if you need to record a jack application you can go in and set it up just as we did a minute ago okay and you'll be fine now hopefully that answered a lot of questions for everyone I know this has ran a long long time this video has and there's a lot of confusing little things that I've done I've jumped from one thing to another and to another to another but all these little things if you need to go back and watch and rewatch just follow along with those little things that I've done and you should be completely set up with an install of Manjaro that will work if you don't like GNOME XFCE works really really well for audio okay I don't suggest to a lot of people that they use like um, you know like tiling window managers for, for for audio in this way because it's not unless you're really really familiar with them and comfortable with them you're just going to slow yourself down so you know you can use any desktop environment KDE is fine LXQT is fine um, I, I'm trying to think what all does Manjaro offer I know their main distros that are not community editions or desktops is GNOME, KDE and uh, XFCE I would suggest to either go GNOME or XFCE KDE is fine I just personally I, it takes me longer to set up a KDE install than it does a Windows install nowadays so I just I avoid it like the plague there's also community editions um, Manjaro has quite a few community editions for x86 machines also everything I did should work on ARM except studio controls I do not think there is an ARM version of it yet so you'll have to manually configure Jack. But on my Pinebook Pro, I've used our door a couple times just to record a voiceover. It worked perfectly fine with Jack. Okay. And our door kind of configured itself for me. All right, let's look here. XFCE, Plasma, and GNOME. Yes, those are the regular Manjaro official editions and then the community editions are budgie that would be pretty good if you like that that uh, desktop environment budgie would be a good option cinnamon is an amazing desktop environment i just like cinnamon i always have i used to run manjaro cinnamon for quite a while on a couple machines i'm just i'm not i kind of got bored of it if that makes any sense you ever get bored of the desktop environment you use in, in Linux? I, I, that doesn't happen to me on a Macintosh. I, I absolutely hate Windows, but I, I never really get bored because they change it up just enough every so often that, you know, every couple of years they they change enough things that it feels like a different desktop environment, even though it looks like the same <laughs> setup as, you know, back in 2000, what was it, 2001, 2002 when they went to OS X? Deepen. I would not. I honestly, I wouldn't use Deepen's desktop environment. It's not really built for for pro audio. But you know, if you have to, hey, it's up to you. Use whatever you want to. But I I suggest kind of avoid Deepen. I three. <laughs> man, I don't know. I've never got along with I three, and it's just me. You know, Open Box works really well for me for pro audio if I wanted to do that. <clears throat> There's also Mate. I don't like Mate. I have this thing against Mate. They can't put a button in the dadgum settings, okay, for you to be able to do natural scrolling with a mouse. You can do it with a trackpad. If you've got a trackpad on a laptop, they got that button there for you. You know, would you like to reverse the scrolling on your on your trackpad or touchpad? Yes. Now where's the one for my mouse? Oh, there isn't one. Oh yeah, I'm never using Mate. <laughs> I just I refuse to use it. 
how hard is it to give me just a little button that says natural scrolling everybody else does it KDE does it LXQT does it XFCE does it GNOME does it but guess who doesn't Mate go figure and then there's Sway daily builds I tried Sway I kind of dug it it was cool it's just you know it's I'm not a tiling window manager guy I like open box and I used to really like the Manjaro BSPWM <laughs> but a lot of those I, you know I'm not I'm not real good with like going into config files and fixing stuff uh, so I like the BSPWM it worked okay I really like their awesome window manager that was a cool setup and I, I wish they still had it but they don't but those are your options uh, I would suggest Budgie Cinnamon and uh, yeah <laughs> that's about it you know or the mainline versions those are fine if you're on ARM like the Pinebook Pro or something it looks like they have uh, GNOME Plasma Mate XFCE and Sway and uh, basically a terminal <laughs> called the Minimal but uh, you know GNOME seems to work really, really, really good on the Pinebook Pro. Um, I gave my Pinebook Pro to my dad, who is 70. How old is dad? 74? And he was never really computer efficient. You know what I mean? Like, But I put GNOME on the Pinebook Pro as soon as it came out, and then I knew my dad could use it. He had been using Cinnamon for, oh about a year and he doesn't do a whole lot he'll type out some documents for some things that he does now that he's retired and some uh you know meetings that he belongs to in 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 the community and uh some of his charity work that he does but uh i put gnome on there and it he was he never had a macintosh that he used we had them the family did and he bought them for us as kids, but he never used them. He had a XP and, and Windows, whatever it was before that, like Windows 95, <laughs> something like that, you know. So he knew his way around Windows. And I put Cinnamon on a machine he had that was really bogging down. And it gave new life to a really old, old AMD, like a 2002 AMD dual-core processor. And it worked perfectly fine. I, we ran Linux Mint on it. He liked it. And then I bought the Pinebook Pro, did a few videos with it. I like it. It's really cool. But his laptop finally died one day. And the option was give him an old MacBook Pro that I've got that I don't think he would like. And it still had a spinning drive in it. That's how old it was. It's like a 2012 13-inch MacBook Pro. and Or give him this Pinebook Pro. All he does is office stuff. He does know his way around... Um, uh, LibreOffice, so I gave him the Pine Book, and he just he likes GNOME. He's like, "Oh, this is an easy desktop environment for me to work around." It's GNOME 40 too, and he's like, "I get it." So that's that's saying a lot. He's like, "I just hit the super key and type in what I want, right?" And I'm like, "Yep." And he's like, "I can do that." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, Dad, cool." You know, uh, the only thing he doesn't like about Manjaro is having to update so often. He's like, "Every time I open this computer, it's like." hey you got some updates i was like yeah it's called arch he's like that other one wasn't like that i know that's different kind of linux dad <laughs> what's the difference one of them gives you real new stuff as soon as it comes out one of it wait what the other one waits quite a while before you get it he's like huh that seems kind of dumb why don't they just give you the new stuff i was like i don't know dad <laughs> you know it's like got questions that i it's kind of hard to answer to a 70 year old guy you know but those options will work i suggest gnome or xfce those seem to work the best budgie will be an awesome desktop environment if you're going down that road um you shouldn't have any issues with that interesting huh my touch screen isn't working correctly now okay let's see here touch let me open something here like the file manager oh it's just firefox apparently yeah, it was just Firefox. Weird. That was weird. All right, guys and gals, I hope this helped everybody else out. 
if it did if you need to know anything else just let me know I don't care to make a video for you to explain it and I can go into more granular detail on on a single thing if you really need to know like hey when I set up you know such and such what do I need to do it's easier for me to do that than do these long form videos where I have to set everything up because I get kind of uh, um, excited to get everything done and I work in my own kind of convoluted way of multitasking as you can see it's it can be a little confusing but if you need granular detail on something such as like uh, uh, setting up studio controls for the first time or hey how did you uh, get studio controls to open when you uh, boot your machine or or any of those little things just let me know in the comments I'll make a dedicated five six minute video to show you how to do that and uh, that way you've got some explanation just leave me a comment it may take me a couple days to make it i'll get it done and get it up for you but if you're on open susa and you want to use our door man i i tried it last night and it just did not work for me and i tried everything <laughs> you know it just it does not it's not supported number one our door doesn't support open susa and the only version that's supported is our door three and I don't even think I've ever used our door three. I think I started at like four. So that tells you a lot about how old that is. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to jump out of here so I can get you a video that's not 4,000 hours long and uploaded today, hopefully. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Get out there, make some music, make it on Linux, on a Mac, on a PC, on an iPad, whatever you got, make music on it. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.